Hey, we are live. We are live. I'm just waiting to get the notifications. This is your girl, Queen Muhammad. And I do not have my glasses on, <laughs> which um, normally just helps me um, see this screen. And you see the topic. The call in line is open. And... Uh, Will Smith, okay, if you follow me on Mama Bear Queen 215, oh, let me turn this down, let's turn this down, all right, um, the notifications are going out, make sure that you donate to keeping people warm that supports rich long and this channel and all of the work that he's trying to do so do not come in here if you're not going to go there first and support um but come on in we're going to keep it real here um as you know i'm your girl queen muhammad and uh Oh my gosh, I'm the CEO and founder of Mad Pop Records. We got so many good songs out. Make sure that you go check us out. You can follow me personally at Mama Bear Queen 215 on Instagram. And, um, you know, over here, we, 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 we do a lot of music, but we also do a lot of, of fun and, and laugh. And anybody who knows... Um, myself know that I'm from West Philly as well. So um, I actually grew up with Will Smith and um, in the same neighborhood. And also um, my sister who's older than me was in the same class as him. And also on Mama Bear Queen 215, which was my Instagram page, I, I, I often talk about a story when I was about maybe five or six years old and my father wanted to, you know, he just came home and he said, let's go out for a drive. And um, I thought he was getting a call in. Call in line is open, 1-800-743-1179. Make sure that you subscribe. Make sure that you like. Make sure that you, um, that you are fully involved. I'm trying to, um, okay, so call in 1-800-743-1179. So let me go ahead on about the story. All right, anybody who follows me know that I said this many of times. I was about five or six years old, so Will Smith's about 10 years older than me because my sister's 10 years older than me, and they were in the same class in Overbrook. So, um... So I was about five or six and, and my dad and mom, my dad came home and said, let's go out for a drive. It was a nice summer um, evening and that's something he never really did before. So I was just surprised. You know how when you're a child and you have time to spend with your, um, your family. Uh-oh, we're getting a call in. Give me a second. Yeah, so I'll tell that story in a second. Um, hello, Godmother Podcast, you on the line. What up, what up, what up? What up, who's calling? Where are you calling from? I'm, call I'm calling out your phone, baby. Okay. <laughs> okay, what are your thoughts on this? Do we still love... Uh, Big Willie from Philly. Oh man, it's all boy, Big Willie, man. You know, see, I mean, hey, he just, I mean, he had to defend Jada's honor, man, and give him the smack, lay the smack down. Would you do the same thing for your lady, or uh? I would do the same. <laughs> I would do the same thing for you. Okay, what? Hmm? What'd you say? I said, yeah, I would do the same thing. Okay, okay. 
Okay, yeah. Um, make sure that you um you subscribe and um follow us on all our social media platforms. So, what did you think about Chris Rock? Did you, did you um like his reaction? Yeah, I mean, I think he kept it up very professional about this going on. You know what I'm saying? No one here and it's a lot of buses and records keeping it traditional. I feel like he, he played his part. I mean, can't be out there on the after showing you, showing you butt. You know what I'm saying? I'm a... Exactly, exactly. Um, I think he did uh, um, what was needed, which was to, you know, just to keep it professional. So kudos to Chris Rock. Everybody don't hate Chris Rock. We love Chris Rock over here. Uh, but we got to stand with Will as well because, I mean, that's a, it, it really is an isolated situation. It seemed like it's something that was still if you back. Look, if you let's, not make, if you look, let's not make no mistake about it. What was that movie we were playing in? Mm-hmm. Huh? The, the, the throwback movie where he played pop. Yeah, let me fix this. I'm going to make sure that this is, that you can hear, I can hear. Go ahead. Yeah, what was that movie that we were playing in? Uh, the throwback movie that was called uh, Tim. Yeah, he played in was. um uh a, a lot of movies. He played in um. No, I'm I'm saying the movie where he played as uh Pop. Well, uh, they do. Uh oh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I know he was enemy of the state. <laughs> no, no, this is way this, this movie way before that. I uh. Matter of fact, I'm Six Degrees of movie. Separation? That was his first movie, Six Degrees of Separation? Uh, I'm going to tell you, tell you, hold on, give me just one second. I'm going to tell you exactly what the name of it was. Uh, yeah, Six Degrees of Separation, that was the movie. Okay, okay. So what do you want to say about that movie? Because that was interesting, I'm right? just saying on them. I'm just saying, all I was saying was that, uh, I mean... Chris Rock should I mean, I mean, at, at, cause I mean, I heard a lot of people saying that, well, you know, Chris Rock would have done that, uh, you know, we are just playing in, uh, uh, Bad Boys, and then all these action pack movies, and you know what I'm saying, I Am Legend, mm -hmm. and but in my time, I'm just saying, like, I mean, it could have been me. <laughs> I would have smacked him, I would have fucked him in his face. Yeah, it would have turned I mean, into the Source Awards with most people. Yeah, me personally, me personally, you coming up to me, and I'm on stage, I'm going to be ready for whatever you can do. Exactly. I mean, it would have no. been completely uh, okay. But what I think, and I'm, I'm just going to, um, anything else you want to say? You got the last word? I'm on the podcast in my own room, man. Okay, go ahead. Uh, you know, I just took my father on your podcast, you know what I'm saying? I, I just happened to look up and come across your podcast, and I don't even see it no more. It's the crazy part about it. Mm. Okay, well, you enjoy your day. Thank you for calling in. All right, the the um, call in line is open one eight hundred seven four three eleven seventy nine. Thank you for chiming in. Um, so let me just tell you this real quickly. Um, I was about five or six years old, and I'm coming. Uh, my my family they want to do something. I'm like, okay, great. Uh, we ride out to the plateau. And if you hear in summertime, he always talks about the plateaus where everybody goes. So this is the first and only time that we ever did this. That's why I was very surprised as a kid to, do, to go out to this place. And what it was was just a um, grass in the park, and that's it. You know, it's just people, cars, and just a chill spot where everybody could just, you know, it was kids, young, old, and it was very... It's just a good time. And we rolled in to in between all these cars and all these people all around. And Will Smith was standing right there. He, he wasn't, you know, on the a TV show at that point in time. He was just a teenager. But he was very popular and he was very um, everything. So uh, the same personality he has now and that, that we see, that we love, he always had that. Always. Um... And we rolled up on him, and he was standing at the side, standing up. And my dad, he rolled down the window, and he shook his hand. And he said, hey, what's up? And then he, Will Smith said, hey, what's up? You know, and, and, and that was it. And we just, and I'm, and I'm in a kid in the back seat. First of all, I was surprised that my dad, who, you know, kids, we look at, at our, our, our parents as dinosaurs. All right, we got another uh, call coming in. 
Godmother Podcast. What's your thoughts on Big Willie? Man, um, I don't know, like, I don't respect that, man, because he laughed. Mm. Okay, what's your name? You know what I'm saying? Where you calling from? Yeah. I'm calling from Fort Worth, man. All right, Fort Worth in the house. So what do you think? Like, like he found it funny as a joke. Mm. He found it funny. <laughs> wow. You know what I'm saying? So he laughed first, and then he looked at her, and she gave him the eye. So then his whole mood changed. Yeah, I feel like um, he... It really was something of he was trying to do something in her honor. So I hope that she's not now throwing him underneath the bus is what I heard. You know, because I feel like it was just... You know, definitely, hmm? you know, definitely can believe she's going to be throwing him up under the bus on it. Like, she didn't have nothing to do with that. Like, she wished he would have done that. But, you know, like, if you're going to stand up for your wife, I feel if you're going to stand up for your wife, period, it should never even took the Oscars for you to do that. Yeah. I was, like, mm -hmm, go there's been so many other situations they've been placed in and you didn't defend her then. Mm. So don't pick and choose your battle in the public eye when you've been in the public eye the whole time. Mm. Yeah. Like, I understand there is a breaking point for every individual. But don't choose that battle something mm. harmless. Like, a, like, a whole other dude had sex with your wife. She went through that whole situation, but not one time did you address him. Mm. Now, so I feel like he... I'm going to play devil's advocate. Because this clips over the years of Chris Rock coming at Jada, you know, saying uh, that that last joke at the Oscars was a uh, very vile joke, saying something about Rihanna's panties, that she wasn't invited. Like, don't you think that maybe it was a buildup or something? What do you think? I think this. If you go to a comedy show, do you see anyone come out the comedy show and slap the comedy? Exactly. That's what. See, that's the that's a, another devil's advocate because now comedians can't stand up for that because, you know, they they push the line all the time. Right. So Chris Rock is a comedian, mm -hmm. yes, but is. they do it at the Source Awards. They did. It, they did it at the Beans. They do it every time you got a black host. At a place, they're going to crack jokes. Yeah. They're not. They're not. Try, now, if it was more than one joke, then I could look at it as, yeah, you're targeting her. That's something personal. But he just made a joke. You know, I mean, they scan the room and make jokes about everybody, not mm -hmm. specifically just one individual. Well, you can't be sitting on front line with a bald head if it can't be fired up. I just was going to say that, and they were sitting in the front, so you know that was just like, ah, uh, like right in front of his face, so it probably was too tempting to pass up. All right, thank you for calling in from Fort Worth. Hold on, hold on, oh, hold, on, hold, on, hold, on, hold, on hold on, hold on, with my friend that's keeping it real. Oh, oh, he'll be on, he'll be on, uh, you know, he's, this is not, you know, uh, you talking about Rich Long? Hello? All right, well, I guess they hung up. I did not hang up on you. Um, but yeah, Rich Long, he'll be uh, back. He tries to give you, uh, at least if it's not daily, consistent content um, of his thoughts. He just put a video out, what, yesterday? Tapping into the Tory Lane situation, that was a, a, a big shocker. Uh, but yeah, I wanted to just come on and um, and this is how you support Rich Long right here. So you wanna know about Rich? This is how you support him, keeping people warm. And that gets everything going. It allows us to do the charity and um, the charity work that we, we do on a regular basis. If you are a person in need of help, make sure that you contact Rich. Uh, that way he can put you in your family or your needs on our, our list, our waiting list of things once we get items and we can definitely um, help you out. So if you're in need of help, contact us. If you are 
supportive and you want to give to the movement, this is it right here. Keeping people warm. Cash app. All right. Back into the subject. So I was just really, really, really um, shocked as a child to go through that. Um, I, I kind of like, um, everybody really knew he was a star growing up, um, which he's exceeded more than everybody's expectations. Now, over the years, we can say that, um, you know, he, he's lived his life very publicly. Maybe some people may say oversharing. Um, you know, a lot of bedroom antics, um, entanglements, you know, a lot of little things that we may not even want to know too much about. You know, we, we like Will Smith and we like to see him on the screen. But now since, and, and even he said when he first started Instagram that he kept his private life private. He kept himself as a celebrity on a high horse, which he felt like that's what people, you know, what older Hollywood did. And him actually coming to Instagram actually um, opened up a whole new world of, of technology and, and, and graphics and, and special effects that he has done with his post. So, um, but like I said, I got to play devil's advocate because I'm not on either, even though I'm from uh, Philadelphia, West Philly, everybody know I was born in Virginia. But I've been in West Philly t since I was about um, two or three. And so I lived my whole life here, my entire um, school upbringing here, and also um, had a family here. My son, who just graduated from Lower Marion High School, the same year as Kobe Bryant passed away in year 2020, that was a hard year for him. So me going to Overbrook, graduating, same as Will Smith and my son going to um, Lower Marion, same as Kobe Bryant. You know, we were definitely tapped into these individuals because, you know, there are alums. There are alums. And that was a very hard um, year for those graduates. They had a nice ceremony at the school in Lower Marion for Kobe Bryant. Um, you know, so all these events, even though they're happening way across the world and in, 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 or down south or whatever, we all are affected by all of these things that happen in current events. Um, call in line 1 800 743 1179. Um, do we still love Big Willie from Philly? Um, I say yes. I think that um, Denzel Washington stepping in and really giving his elderly advice. Um, you know, he's really done things the right way. You know, he, he um, I'm not trying to say that, you know, no matter who you date or marry, but he, 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 he kept it real. Uh, he kept it with his wife. What a lot of actors are, a lot of actors, Samuel Jackson, Anthony Anderson, um, even Will Smith. So, you know, they're hanging it out. They're bad marriage for life. So, you know, they're going to stick it out as well. Hopefully, I hope that Jay does not throwing him underneath the bus because that, I mean, for real, for real, to be honest, uh, I, I know a lot of ladies' panties must, you know, you're talking about Rihanna's panties, a lot of ladies' panties, you know, may have gotten, uh, you know, moist with, uh, you know, a man doing that type of chivalrous action was something that he felt that his, he didn't want to deal with at home, probably. Um, <laughs> um, you can go to Mama Bear Queen 215. They had a little spoof post about um, a similar situation that he had with um, with Nia Long on the Fresh Prince, where he's laughing at a joke and she's upset as hell, and he changed it, changed his whole attitude, and that's similar to what happened in that situation. Um, he, you know, he found it. He, I don't know if he found it funny, but it was very lighthearted. He got, he got the the gist of everything and i think when he looked over and saw that jada was not happy because i heard a story and i don't know if this is true or not but i just saw this 
and, and, and this kind of puts things into perspective. Before they had all of that entanglement situation and, and all of the rumors, um, when they were just maybe starting out, maybe maybe about a few, few years in, he was preparing for Jada's 40th birthday party. And I heard that he actually spent three years preparing for her birthday party. Um, I don't know if it's true or not, but even she talks about things on the, on the Red Table Talk where she's not really 100% happy, 100% satisfied, um, and, you know, missing Tupac and whatever, whatever. But anyway, um, so I can't confirm whether I just heard this. And he prepared for this birthday party for three years. And the day of the party, um, he brings out this ancestry. I, now, I don't know every detail, but it's a, he, he tracked her lineage all the way to slavery. So he, he did a whole bunch of research. You know, Will Smith probably did it to the top nines. Well, it's rumored that as soon as they got home... It was Ike and Tina, uh, Jada B and Ike. But it's like, no, it, it didn't get physical, but she just basically, like, look, that was the most egotistical, you know, crazy thing I've ever experienced in my life. I'm, I'm embarrassed by what you have just done to me. And that's when they kind of rumored to have broken up maybe, like, the first or second time. So that's what he's probably thinking of. Like, oh, my God, I got to hear this. I don't want to hear this. This is going to be forever in a day. I'm just, I'm just speculating, just going on past and now going to, you know, fast forwarding now, you know, that's probably something that was in the back of his mind, pleasing her. So, um, and, and another thing I, I, um, I, uh, learned about that. I mean, it, like I said, it's nothing wrong with that. It's nothing wrong with wanting to be, um, chivalrous to your wife, you know what I'm saying? So he... He, uh, even though he may have to take his licks about it, his intentions were to be chivalrous. Because another back thing that I heard yesterday, I was listening to Chris Rock because I try to tap into him as well uh, and, and give it a little mental check in on that. And he kind of talked about some things that was. He said that um, when he gets the gig to do the to host something, he always asked. He always asked. What can I talk about? And then he writes his material. Okay? He doesn't let the people see it after that. Because he, he, he said, then it will be on and on and on and on and on about what you don't want. So once you initially tell me, this is what Chris Rocket said. He said, once you initially say, what can I talk about and what can I uh, talk about, then, uh, then he writes his routine. And so... That kind of got me to thinking, well, maybe that was on the list of things that he couldn't talk about. Because I think it's more personal. That's why I, I really not don't want to get involved and cancel either one of them. Because I think it was more of, you know, not you. You, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, you know, it, I think it was more of a personal thing. They've known each other for a long time. And I think it was just like, you know, I know you ain't talking. Like, I, I told you... 50 million, 11 times, you know, you done, you done roasted my wife on the Million Women March. You done roasted her, you know, saying she wasn't even invited when she was trying to get some traction about black people being represented at this thing. And that was, you know, so now here you go again. So I think that that was more of his premise. It was more of a personal thing that we were able to watch publicly. And that's where... Um, the problem lies because now we have to have an opinion on you because it, it was public and it was like, uh, like what did we do? What, what do we, where do we go from here? But I think, you know, I'm not trying to make excuses for the situation because, but I think that it was a lot of elements at play. One element was, um, Jada not being happy. If Jada was happy, Will would have been happy. Okay, so that's one. Now, from a woman's point of view, who wouldn't want a man like that? You know what I'm saying? So, uh, you know, I, I definitely understand. Then the second, I think, layer to it is it being him, of all people. And, and, 
And now that I listen to Chris Rock, and he says that that's what he does when his as his uh, preparation process is he asks the platform, "What can't I say?" And then he writes his routine and do not let anybody see it from that point on, you know, because he says, you know, it will be, kind of, oh, don't do that. Don't do that. And then it would be so watered down. So he said, your first mind, let me know. And they probably had something on there. Um, I, you know, it'll come out later. But if that's what he, the criteria is, I'm pretty sure it probably you know, threw them all off guard if he's still talking about it. And I think that's why he said, well, it's just a G.I. Jane joke. You know, like he thought that, you know, when somebody say don't talk about something, that he could actually just do something and not, uh, uh, you know, and, and it was going, you know. So it, I think it's a lot of back story and layers. And over the years, you know, like we're not going to just flip out and act like uh, Will Smith is just some... Uh, meltdown and, 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 and off the handle. It was a lot of little things going on. And and, and, made, and, and like I said, like Rich Long said, that was something he wanted to do. <laughs> um, call in line, 1-800-743-1179. I'm going to stay on for a little bit longer, but um, if nobody's calling in, do we still support and love Big Willie from Philly? Now, playing devil advocate again, I can't, I, I can't talk about a situation that I'm in, you know what I'm saying, uh, I, until after the situation is over. I'm not trying to get carted away like Tory Lanez, <laughs> you know, and the courthouse. So I'm just going to keep my mouth closed. But I definitely understand being in Chris Rock's position and being assaulted and not you know, reacting. I believe that that was the best option. Would it be an option for many? Probably not. Because it is a instant reaction when someone hits you. You know what I'm saying? Like, so anybody saying anything differently, you know, he didn't have to be noble in that point in time. You know, he didn't have to be, you know, uh, think about the black race or the community or whatever at that point in time. So, People giving him kudos for that is um, is rightfully so because that in that moment uh, where you're at a job setting, okay, let's get clear, you're at a job setting, and some people paying you to do this job, um, you know, he did the right thing. Um, will. He, he stepped down from the academy. He stepped down from the academy, whatever that means. Um, he stepped down. And I, I don't believe that he should have to give back his award. Because, again, if somebody tells you, and these are A-list, top dollar, give, they, they give so hundreds of millions of dollars to charity. Okay? And speaking of that... Keeping people warm. Okay, Big Willie, come over here and give some of that to uh, our charity. Keep people warm. Make sure you guys support. Uh, that's what keeps the doors open and the lights on. And um, as you see, we're figuring it out to have better, um, just different quality of things and stuff like that. So make sure that you go over to keeping... I mean, make sure that you support this channel. This is how you do it. Keeping people warm. All right? So, um, I still support Big Willie from Philly. You know, he's been a, a stellar actor. Um, he probably should have gotten a Oscar a long time ago. And that probably was one of his frustrations. Um, he felt like probably this was his big night. Um, and we're not even going to di deep dive into Jada and her hair condition because, like I said, everything is business. So if, if he got a list of things, this is what we don't know. This is what we need to be inquiring about, uh, you know, sleuthers. Because <laughs> y'all know that I love to Scooby-Doo my way around and find some things out. 
We need to know what was on that writer or that list of things that he could not talk about. So if he violated that and that was an instant reaction of him, now that's the layer number one. Number two is Jada being upset. Number three is, uh, <laughs> you know, Chris getting slapped. And, and now here we are. You know, we, we're not just going to say that. I don't, I don't think that Will Smith can't take a joke. I don't believe that. Because I feel like now a lot of niggas is coming after his net, you know. And I don't, I don't think that that was the issue. I don't think that he can't take a joke. I think that it was something already pre-put in place that that was going to be a subject that he was not going to talk about. That was, And that's based off of Chris Rock interview that I just watched yesterday where he said, he immediately asked, what can't I say? And then he writes this routine and do not let anybody see it from that point on because then it will be constantly, you know, well, you can't do this, you can't do that. You know what I'm saying? So, and then he said that, you know, basically that he has to take risk from there, you know, and that was a risk that he took. And sometimes when you know as us as people, not even black people, when people try you, and then, you know, you, and then your, your significant other is upset who really, you know, good or bad rides with you. Like, you know what I'm saying? You going home with them. You ain't going home with nobody else at this academy. You going home with this person who's probably going to, as we talked about, true or not true, it's a story out there that, that was not uh, uh, unconfirmed by them that... Um, she had a fit after that, for you know that 40th birthday party, and he actually spent about three years planning that. Got a whole lineage, you know, of her lineage, tracked her her lineage all the way back to slavery, and and really tried to make a big thing of who she is and and, and who she was, who she is as a, as a person and her makeup and everything. And it's rumored that she was pissed. So this that was the most, even though she was doing it for her. She said, you know, it's rumored that she said, allegedly, that this is the most egotistical thing that you could ever do. And uh, I'm embarrassed by this crap. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and that was, you know, that was like one of the first or second or whatever time, one time that he was pretty much done. And, um, but thank goodness they're still together. And um, I, I think that that Red Table Talk is going to be very interesting people feel like the Smiths overshare, you know, but now we're looking, we don't really want to, you know, all your entanglements and love life, uh, we can probably do without, I think it was a petition, uh, a year or so ago to stop sharing from the Smiths, <laughs> you know, people were signing a petition for that, uh, but now we want to know, we want to know, I, I think the logical answer is, whether it's true or false, false is, and me being a publicist and marketing person myself, if you would like to work with Mad Power Records, make sure that you contact us through email, info and bookings at madpop.com. Info and bookings with an S at madpop.com. If you want representation, we do this down there 24-7. And we have fun. As you see, you can go through to my Instagram page, I'm sorry. My Instagram page is Mama Bear Queen 215 and you can also follow Rich at Keeping People Real TV on Instagram. Make sure that you subscribe to this channel. Um, we see we have a lot of different contact content. We have uh, Keep Swimming with Ashton, her show. Uh, we'll, we'll be probably going back live again later on today. To um, She has a very good subject coming up and she wants to kind of deep dive into it because she's um it, it really affects her her personally as being an athlete and a top athlete in that sport an, an olympic winning gold medalist athlete in that sport so um you probably can kind of figure out what we're talking about uh but she's going to come back and and talk about that give her opinions on that and it's also going to let you know the, the, the objectiveness of this channel. 
uh, we don't have an agenda. Our agenda is to just keep it real, and that's what we do. I'm going to be signing out. 1-800-743-1179 if anybody wants to call them. I'm going to be wrapping it up. Make sure that you go over to Keeping People Real TV on Instagram. Go follow him. Make sure that you subscribe to this channel. Make sure that you like. That's what keeps our our uh, channel up in the algorithm so when you come into the room when you watch on the replay make sure that you hit that thumbs up button and um, and give us your thoughts we had a couple people call calling in one from Fort Worth yes we, we you know it, it's, it's it's we know that probably Chris Rock probably kept it more composure than we probably ever could. And I know, that, you know, I, like I said, anyway, uh, you know, because it's very, when you get hit, you don't know what your reaction is going to be. That when, when you've been assaulted, you don't know what your reaction is going to be. So the fact that Chris Rock kept his composure, kudos to him. We love Chris Rock. Uh, I think he's super funny. He's a comedian, and I, and, I, and I really like all of the stand-up comedians. Because Will Smith's a comedian, but he's more of a, a, a actor. He's an actor. And um, who's funny. And just has a natural personality, like a lot of us do in Philly. We just have a natural um, uh, comedic side to us. And that's just because when you grow up in so much, you know, poverty and... and and um, this place is, is rich in music and culture. And, um, you know, it's just a vibe that we have here. Um, um, so it's a lot of that just, just tends to just, just make us naturally comical people. But Chris Rock, he actually does this for a, lim a living. He's a stand-up comedian. So I do not have a, a problem with the stand-up comedians supporting him because they don't want to get knocked up on stage. You know what I'm saying? They, they, they do the same thing every night and trust and believe half of their material is not going to be as watered down as, as, as at the Oscars. Um, so that's why I don't believe it, it, Will Smith couldn't take a joke. You know, you obviously see he was laughing. But the fact of the matter is, his wife was upset, and then it probably, you know, who knows what she said. Like, I, t I told him not to talk about it. You know, you don't know what she was whispering. You know what I'm saying? Like, like you know, and then somebody, then you kind of feel like, yeah, this, this Negro is talking about something. I told him, not to, you know, not to, not to tap on. And now you're trying me. You know what I'm saying? So now you're trying me on a public forum, and then my wife is mad, and I'm, and I'm, and I'm here. I'm just, I, I don't know this to be true. I'm just saying logically. We can't just say, oh, yeah, Will Smith still has a meltdown. That's not, a, that's not logical. Logical is, if we're going to keep it real, he was mad his wife was upset. He didn't want to deal with it. I told you what happened uh, allegedly years ago. He said he, don't wanna, he didn't want to repeat of that, and he'd rather, you know, look favorable in his eyes than ours. And that's, you know, like I said, what women want and want that. But every woman don't, you know, you can't put your man into those type of positions either. You know, um, us as women. And, and then who knows, that, that Tupac element, you know, she keep throwing that out there, even as, 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 as recent as a couple years ago. Um that element who that has really been a hanger even now i'm not talking about anything that they haven't talked about themselves um it has it bothered him it bothered him so maybe he wanted to be her tupac and he wanted to be that that hero who knows who knows so he's a hero in all of our eyes but he just wants to be a hero in hers and um that may or may never happen but what we do know is going to be bad marriage for life. Okay? All right. Thank you for stopping by the Godmother Podcast. Uh, you can go subscribe to my channel, Godmother Podcast. I'm Queen Muhammad. I am the CEO and founder of Mad Pop Records. 
Make sure that you go check out um, us, Mad Pop Worldwide, on Instagram. Also check out my new single, Unbelievable, by myself and Robert Curry. It's a bop. <laughs> yes, it's a mother bop. It's an inspirational song. We wrote it while Rich Long was in prison as, a, as he was part of the inspiration of getting that song together. So we thank you.